Hi and welcome to a new tutorial for Stitch Buddy, um, an embroidery editor for macOS and iOS. And I'm Matthias, the person behind Stitch Buddy. Um, in this video today, I will show you a feature which will be introduced with the next version of Stitch Buddy for macOS, Stitch Buddy 3.4, and it's going to offer background images. Um, this item has on my to-do list for quite a while. And people were asking mainly for background images for, well, a more realistic view of their embroidery designs, which is of course one and maybe the main use case for background images. Um, but uh, in the last uh, month when I introduced creating stitches based on shapes, people were approaching me and asking for background images as well as a kind of a template for creating shapes. And today in this video, I will show you both use cases. So let's get started. Um, in Stitch Valley 3.4, you will have an additional um, property in the settings dialog, which is referring to background images, uh, which is here a pop down menu with no entry, except there is no background image and I can select one. And when I'm selecting an image, I will have the file browser here and I can navigate through my file system. For example, I have something prepared on my desktop. Uh, so there's a background folder. And here are a couple of images. And um, well, let's start first with the realistic view on, on the, of designs. So I'd like to have a background image which features a kind of a blue fabric. And well, when I would like to use this image here and just let me quick look it so you can have a look um, i will be asked to enter something like the actual width and height so the, the the real life size of this image why is that um, because if the image is displayed in stitch body it has to have the appropriate size to fit the embroidery design so stitch body needs to know uh, how large this photo or this image is in real life. Uh, what I did was I took a photo with my iPhone and put a ruler at the bottom of, of, of the fabric there. And after that, I opened this image in, in a graphic program, so Pixelmator, for example, and I cropped the image to be exactly, in, in my case, 30 by 30 um, centimeters. Um, you might work with inches, it, it doesn't matter. You just have to have a, a, a kind of a ruler or something like that so you can crop the image exactly to its real size. So that's what I did here. So I select the blue fabric image and I give it 300 by 300 millimeters. Um, and I can now open the image and it's displayed in, in Stitch Buddy here. Um, so this way you can use any um, fabric, any photo you have, any image. It might be a JPEG, a PNG, SVGs are fine as well. Um, so you can just open the image and have it as a background. And if I zoom out, you will realize that it has limitations because I had a selection not to tile this image. So it just this one image 30 by 30 centimeters, which is just shown as a background here. But of course, sometimes we'd like to have a tiled image going from over the whole canvas. So again, entering the settings, um, you can use a different image. I wouldn't suggest to use photos for that because if an image is tiled, you would see the edges between um, the, the, the images when when they are tied or when they are touching each other. So here, for example, I have a line pattern. Um, let's open and quick look, which is just a very simple pattern here. And uh, I'm choosing this one um, just for two by two millimeters. So really a tiny image, but I now check the mark to repeat this background image and open it. And now I have my background tiled here. So if I'm zooming in, just for example, you can see that it's the image I selected. Um, repeat it over and over again until it fits the whole canvas. 
So, but maybe I'd like to skip back to my other blue fabrics there without selecting again a file, without entering the, the, the size, etc. So I can just use this uh, background image pop down menu. And here I have my recent items there. And they're still my blue fabric. Um, five items, up to five items are stored here in this menu. So I can easily switch back and forth between them. And um, maybe even more important, there's a new view option in Stitch Buddy as well, uh, where I can simply toggle the background image uh, on and off. So it's it's a command key together with zero. So if I'm pressing command and zero, I can just switch between the background image back and forth. And Maybe that's a good opportunity to introduce the view options because you might know that every view option here to show jump stitches, to show the first or the last stitch, uh, hiding the rulers, um, and showing the uh, stitch area, so the hoop, um, the center of the design, etc. They all have shortcuts, shortcuts. So it's very easy by pressing Command and one, two, three, up to zero to change view options. So for example, I can have a very specific view and just let's close the preference window here, uh, a very specific view for editing embroidery design. So I don't want to have a background. I'd like to sh see the jump stitches, um, which I already have. It's a grid that's fine for me. Maybe additionally, I'd like to have um, the center of the uh, design being marked with, with a crosshair there. And maybe I'd like to see the underlays, which uh, show me the structure of the design as well. So that might be a good view um, to really work on designs, um, zoom in and on higher zoom levels here and see penetration points, etc. PP. On the other hand, if I just want to have a visual representation of the design, how it might look in, in, in real life, I I um, just disable the jump stitches. I disable the grid, hide the rulers, uh, no um, um, hoop or um, center of the design should be shown. Um, I'm not interested so much in the structure, but more really in the stitches. And I'd like to have them realistic with some background image. And here we are. So. That's a completely different view. Um, it's a combination of these, I think there are 10 view options. You can just uh, switch on and off. So that's up to you. Um, that's for the first use case, realistic views of, or more or less realistic views of your embroidery designs. Um, well, this, this design I just used here is my sample design, which is also opened when you're I'm launching Stitch Buddy for the first time. It looks more impressive with more complex designs, but I don't want to show them here so that I'm not harming their, their copyrights for, for of their creators. So just thanks for your understanding that I'm just using the sample design here. Um, coming to the second use case. So let's let's assume I have an image uh, which I would like to use in Stitch Buddy as some kind of a shape. I would like to generate stitches um, based on this image, so use it as a kind of a template. The, the best and easiest way might be to use this image as an SVG file and import it as a path, as a shape, and then apply stitches. But sometimes you're not able to do this, or the, the, the image is a, is a more complex one. So you like to create manual paths based on this image. And let's do that. So I'm, I'm opening a new design. Um, I'm switching the background to something different here. Um, I've prepared a very simple image with a sailing boat here. It's an SVG, but that doesn't matter. It could be PNG or JPEG as well. And um, maybe a good size is be something like or 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So that's basically in, in two inches by two inches, something like that. Um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be repeated, but just send it as a single in, image. Here we are. I'm closing the preferences and maybe zoom out a little bit 
to see this. So, so that's that's only a background image now. And now I'm using the add shape option here, um, using the um, toolbar item to add individual paths. And I'm not now just using this shape as a kind of a template. So uh, starting with path here, going over there, third point and closing the path, and start a new path maybe here, going over there again, closing here, and now I'm changing this line to a curve. And okay, I need of course to adjust the, the, the curves, um, so I use the adjustment tool here, and just very roughly here, make it the sale, um, maybe something like that. Uh, and the next one, again, creating the path, so starts here, over here, and now I'm holding the um, option key while um, creating the next anchor point. So it's uh, added as a curve already, which is a little bit easier here for the waves. Um, so maybe up to this, um, ending the path. Maybe also closing the set paths here. And um, yeah, it, it's it's good enough or more or less, but I could still use here the, the alignment tool and to change the waves a little bit so they are more in line with my with my image here. Maybe this was only a rough start. But I think you get the idea. Um, so I have now just created paths. Let's stop here, um, which could be used to um, generate stitches as a as a outline or as as a fill type here. Um, so I could just here use a single run stitches for the outline to tell me fills or might, might be okay. Let's generate the stitches here, and now I have. Well, used an image as a background or of just as a kind of a of a template to create and pass and generate stitches here. Um, so normally, of course, I would just toggle now as a background here my stitches, and I can save this design, um, change uh, the thread chart, etc. PP. So something like or um, save it as a JET file, for example, on my desktop. Um, say on my desktop, save, and now maybe change the colors here to some extent at least. And here we are. So um, I think this feature is pretty useful. Um, the first use case is more or less, okay, only a visual effect. Um, nevertheless, it might be useful from time to time if you have to judge on a, on a given design, if it would fit your fabric or not. On the other hand, of course, you have to make the, the, the photo of your fabric, so it's it's not so easy directly to change a background to a new one, um, but it might be handy. Um, the second use case for creating um, stitches, I think, is a good one as well. Um, as I said, just remember the last three, uh, sorry, the last four images are listed here, so it's very easy to uh, jump back and forth. So I could use, for example, the blue one now again and judge on my sailing boat on a blue fabric. Um, this feature will be introduced with Stitch Value 3.4. Um, it's going into a kind of a public beta, I think, within the next few weeks, maybe a few days. And um, so hopefully in August, um, Stitch Body for macOS 3.4 will be ready um, to be released. Um, so I would just encourage you to leave a comment under this video or in the forum, in the community forum of Stitch Party, where we'll post a corresponding discussion. And um, just keep visiting Stitch Party's website for news, where we'll also announce if the new release um, is, is published. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a beautiful summer and take care.